Hi, this is Zach Mayer with the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Vox Markets for Thursday, the 26th of August. Starting off with Advanced Energy on rather a dull day for the small cap movers. Uh, here we have the shares basically testing old resistance at three pence and bouncing off that. Looking towards the top of that rising trend channel from September as the target may be here, here by the end of next month if, uh, on a sort of a, with a wind behind it. Otherwise, uh, end of day close stop loss back below three pence would delay or cancel out the idea. We do have a golden cross that we had earlier this month between the 50 and 200 day moving averages. So that does provide momentum and also just the way that the shares have bounced off old resistance. Uh, it looks pretty encouraging. On to uh, Caspian Sunrise, which uh, doesn't get much airtime here, and um, probably one of the reasons is it's a bit of a slow mover, but uh, looks as though we've um, decided to uh, push ahead now after breaking out of that range, to the top of the range there at three pence. We've tested that as uh, new support uh, over the last few sessions and um, looking for the next level up on the shares, which would be uh, where the stock was last summer, around the 4.2 pence area. Maybe that could be seen by the end of next month, but... Uh, the longer the um, consolidation and then the range breakout uh, after that, the greater the move normally is. So four pence plus is probably the minimum we would be expecting after the shares were consolidating for uh, the best part of a year. Obviously back below 2.9, 2.8 pence really uh, cancelling the idea of a break to the upside. On to Keras, which has had uh, many uh, attempts at breaking to the upside over the recent past uh, 30 to 32 pence, a sort of sticking point for the stock. It looks like they're having another go at uh, heading towards at least the top of the range, which uh, would take it to the low 30s. It's encouraging here that we've had a, a basically a bear trap gap reversal, so just narrowly breaking the initial August resistance and then gapping higher. That tends to be a decent signal. All we need now really is an end of day close through the 50 day moving average in that July resistance line around 25 pence to take us back up to the low 30s. Best case scenario, which I've been looking at or looking for for quite a long time, would be a move towards 40 pence and that May resistance line over the course of the autumn. Stop loss obviously back below 20 pence, which is uh, post uh, May support for the shares. Onto a stock which I know has a lot of fans. Uh, 4D Farmer. I've been sort of shying away from looking at it because it's a slow mover. Or it has been a slow, slow mover over the course of, uh, I suppose, the post-May period. But uh, we've had two or three days now with the shares breaking that line of resistance from February. They've also got price action today above the 50-day, well, at or above the 50-day moving average at uh, 90 pence. So that's all good. Initial target here up to the 200-day moving average at 106, and then after that, one can dream of higher highs, uh, perhaps. Best case scenario uh, target here over the next three to six months would be back to 180, but uh, obviously it's very early days at the moment. 106 really in the 200 day line looks like a sensible uh, target to go for. And ideally the shares remain above that resistance line at 85 pence from February in the meantime. On to uh, Echo Energy, which has had a decent update to date. I think sort of higher production coming through, etc., etc. Uh, here we've got, or um, well, the attraction here really is that we've had a lower, we had lower lows for August, but higher RSI, so it's like there's um, bullish divergence there. We've also got the 200-day moving average still rising, which tends to be a, a magnet on the price, so that's there at 0.7, so hopefully the shares will head towards that. And the final piece of the jigsaw is the way that we've gapped through the uh, top of that falling wedge, a very narrow one, which uh, tends to happen, obviously, at the end of a uh, backward consolidation, which we've had since April, and... Um, the view here is that we can get a decent end of day close above 0.6 or 0.59 rather than up to 0.7, 0.72 could be the target over the next two to three weeks. Stock of the day, but perhaps not in a great way, is um, Helium 1. Here, very interesting from a charting perspective. The reason is that uh, shares basically uh, retested their initial support. So the initial low there, 3.75. Today, the low, 4.75. So essentially wiping out all the gains of the year and also wiping out or ignoring the fundamentals that have uh, the water under the bridge that we've seen in terms of what the company's been doing on the ground. What uh, we want to see now t technically is uh, an end of day close back above that low there from um, back earlier this month, 9.12 pence. If we can get that, then the shares stand a chance of filling the gap up to 12, 12 and a half pence over the next few sessions. Uh, at this stage, though, it looks as though any dips towards the four pence area 
uh, would appear to be a buying opportunity as they have been so far this morning. Moving along to uh, another stock which is um, well, a stock which is on the front foot, uh, MXC Pharma. I did highlight the shares uh, at the beginning of July as they broke out of that uh, falling wedge formation around about two and a quarter pence. So we've done well from there. Obviously, it wasn't expected that it would take the best part of two months for the shares to finally lift off, but they've done that today. Uh, while we remain above the 200-day moving average, just under three pence, 2.92, then we're looking for that line of resistance from March as high as five pence. But uh, obviously, this is a bit wide open in terms of stop losses uh, on this situation, and uh, the 200-day line would be quite a percentage uh, stop loss. But otherwise, five pence that possible there. Always good, though, when the stock gaps up off uh, the lows and also gaps up through the 50-day moving average. So we've had two of those things or two of those events today for uh, MGC Pharmaceuticals. Just a couple of stocks to go now. Uh, first is My Health Check, which is uh, enjoying the uh, testing epidemic that we've got at the moment, uh, which uh, we don't have much choice on it at all. Uh, we've got a break of that triangle there earlier in the week at around three pence. So we've made good pro progress there. We've got the rising 200-day line. That's uh, sucked the price higher. I think there was a gap to the upside as well. So that was a gap off support. So that's uh, something that, which is uh, normally very reliable as well. And uh, the view now is that uh, the longer we stay above three pence, uh, the greater the chance of at least a retest of 4.4 pence, which was last month's resistance and stop loss at uh, the three pence level. But ideally, we have a weekly close uh, above the 200 day line around 3.3 pence tomorrow. Moving along to the last stock today, and uh, Tiziana Life Sciences. Uh, they're obviously, the company is moving to the NASDAQ in the autumn, but uh, in the meantime, it's got to um, find its way in terms of the share price. And the reason that uh, I tweeted out yesterday um, the, uh, regarding the stock was that uh, I just noticed that uh, the RSI uh, it, during the early part of this week has gone to sort of uh, 23, 24 uh, on a, the scale out of 100, and that's the most oversold they were since... Uh, uh, back in February last year. Obviously, in February last year, that was the low point there, 25 pence, and the shares shot up after that. Maybe history won't repeat itself in such a dramatic way, but I think a move towards the 50-day moving average, just shy of 70 pence, uh, could be on the cards. We've done that uh, several times now in the recent past, so sort of um, even though we've been going down, rallied up to the 50-day line and then uh, sold off again. So that's the sort of pattern that one would expect to see over the near term. The other point to note is that uh, we could have a gap close by signal, i.e. an end of day close back above the top of the last gap, which looks like an exhaustion gap. That is at 56 and a half. So an end of day close above that, we should be going for that 50 day moving average over the next week or two. That's it for me today. More updates tomorrow.